From the heart of Wayne County, this is Wayne Goldsboro Television, Goldsboro, North Carolina. the second day of the work week for many. We're glad you're with us today, the 28th of June, 2016. And this is Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kate Daniels. And here we go. We're cranking off the uh, second day of the work week uh, yes. with uh, great weather. It's been very, very nice. We could certainly use a little bit of rain, though. All right, this week, June 30th, Hip Pocket, Pocket. will be in town at the uh, Boogie Woogie Center Street Jam. Always a good time. Always, Always a good time. A good time. Tell you what, that starts about what, six? Six, six, six or seven or something six like right in that area. To nine. That, that's good. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with that. Make sure I'm not saying mm. that wrong. Come on. Well, Come on. Six to nine. On. That's right. Okay. Is it on there? Six to nine. Come on out. It just shows you. i got to read these <laughs> things. Uh, yeah, i got to do it. All right. Blood Drive coming up uh, tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. at the Pikeville Church in, uh, on the Hunter Road in Pikeville. And uh, then we've got July 7th coming up. There's a blood drop. Not sure where that is a little later on. Today at the Senior Center here in Goldsboro, uh, today being the 28th, the arthritis exercise at 9.30. They have billiards at 10. They've got sleeping mat class. Oh. Do you know what those are? No. I did a story on that. It's just unreal. They take, they take uh, grocery bags, the plastic mm -hmm. bags that you carry home from Food line, Walmart, yeah. uh, Sears, uh, Target, yeah. the plastic shopping bags, and they they form them into a, a, a way that they actually can can uh, uh, knit them together, and they create sleeping mats for the homeless. Oh wow! It is just unreal how they do that. Wow! It's beautiful, and some of these are just absolutely gorgeous works of art. Wow! They make them, and they and they take them, give them to the Salvation Army, and they. They have quite a, uh, they have got quite a collection. It takes about a, almost a week to make each one. To make each one. Yeah. How neat. How creative. There's a class. Uh, yeah, Judy Hales is, uh, heads up that class out at the okay. uh, Senior Center, and it's just fantastic. We have also uh, today uh, Open Mic Day, 6, uh, 10, 15 this morning. Open Mic Day, which sometimes can be quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Okay, crocheting and knitting. That's what they do. They crochet, crochet these, these, these well, mats together. The That's how they bags. make those things. Uh, recreational cards, uh, pinochle, and line dancing with Stacia Fields from the Goldsboro Parks and Recreation Department at 6 p.m. this evening. She is so good. Wow, yeah. very good. Yeah. All right, let's see what else we have here. Here we go. July 7th in Eureka, which means I found it. That's what that means. <laughs> I found it in Eureka at, uh, at the Eureka United Methodist Church. Of course, that's all Greek to me. Uh, Eureka United Methodist Church beginning at 2 p.m. July 7th, which is sometime next month. And that will be at uh, North Church Street in Eureka. In Goldsboro on the 9th at the Bridge Church at 1065 North Berkeley Boulevard, 9 a.m. till 1.30 on the 9th, okay? Okay. All right. Let's see. We don't want to talk about that right now. No, I don't talk about that right there. Let's see what we got. Ah, we'll talk about that. We'll save this for what later. What do you want to talk uh, about? <laughs> okay. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the month, and on mm -hmm. July 1st, the filing ends for the Soil and Water Office uh, position that's open. They have, uh, for the 2016 election in November, they're going to need, they're going to, they're trying to find, trying to hire, <laughs> trying to, trying to put in office right. a supervisor. And if you feel you have the stuff that it takes to become a soil and water conservation supervisor, then you need to talk to the folks over at the Board of Elections office. And that's uh, number 919-734-1411, that's 731-1411, and tell them you want to apply for that position, and that means that you would be placed on the ballot 
Uh, qualifications, you must be number one, you must be a registered voter in Wayne County. You must be at least 21 years of old. You must be eligible to vote for the office for which you intend to file. So there you go. And that's pretty much the case on all positions. That's that are open right. Like that. That's right. Yeah. Parks and Recreation Department, oh boy, they've got a whole bunch of camps going on for youth. They've got a whole bunch of stuff going on for adults and for seniors and for special populations. You can go to GoldsboroParksAndRec.com right. and look at their book. It's about... It's crazy. It's about, it is. They've got so much to do. And if you're on social media, if you'll click like on their Facebook page, it'll show up in your news feed what's coming up. It's great. It they is. do a wonderful they job. They do a wonderful job. Scott Barnard has, a, has an amazing staff, mm -hmm. and they are all on the same page. No pun intended, be, because they just do a wonderful job. They do. There. Fantastic. We're going to go to our interview, and we'll be back in just a moment on Wayne Goldsboro Television. Good afternoon. I'm Don Nell, the director of the Governor's Highway Safety Program. On behalf of Governor Pat McCrory and Transportation Secretary Nick Tennyson, uh, I'd like to welcome you to our Booze It and Lose It Operation Firecracker Enforcement Media Event this afternoon. We're in the fourth day of our annual campaign that will continue through July 4th. I'd like to take a moment to recognize our law enforcement partners that have joined us this afternoon and extend my appreciation to all <clears throat> they do not only in our campaign period but throughout the year to curb the number of impaired drivers on our roadways. I'd also like to take a moment to recognize Adam Caldwell rec uh, representing Senator Tom Tillis. He's joined us today. Thank you Adam for being here and thank you for the, all the Senator does to help us in the battle against impaired driving. Operation Firecracker will include stepped up patrols and checking stations across the state cracking down on impaired drivers. During last year's campaign, which ran from June 26th through July 5th, there were 41 fatalities, including 17 alcohol-related fatalities in North Carolina. Last year, North Carolina had 1,377 traffic fatalities, including 405 alcohol-related deaths. So far in 2016, there have been 612 fatalities statewide, including 142 that were alcohol-related. The positive news is that impaired driving fatalities this year are down 53 compared to the same time period last year. As many of you know, Governor McCrory has declared North Carolina as a Vision Zero state, which means our ultimate goal is to have zero fatalities and serious injuries on our roadways. We recently updated our state's strategic highway safety plan, which aims to reduce traffic fatalities by half by the end of 2030. This is no small task, to say the least, but through our collaborative efforts, we are making some progress. When you look at the past 10 years, we've had about 150 days, or about 4%, with no traffic fatalities on our roadways. That's encouraging news, but we still have some days uh, you know, where we have many fatalities, and but we're, we are seeing some days where we have zero, so that, that's encouraging to us, and we have a vast network of roadways in North Carolina, some 80,000 miles worth of uh, roadways. We do still face a daunting challenge and we want to do everything we can to increase the number of fatality free days here in North Carolina. Efforts like our Booze It and Lose It campaign, uh, which started 22 years ago, plays a huge part in realizing this goal by getting impaired drivers off of our roadways and discouraging reckless behavior that puts everyone's jeopard, uh, safety in jeopardy. Since its inception, North Carolina law enforcement agencies have conducted over 366,000 checking stations and saturation patrols during our enforcement campaigns, resulting in nearly 1.5 million DWI arrests. Our campaigns help people realize that drinking and driving is a matter of life and death, and that one wrong decision can have devastating consequences. As our state continues to grow and more people travel more miles on our highways, it is all the more important that we continue to execute efforts that protect everyone. Another component that adds to the success of our enforcement campaigns 
is the inclusion of the breath alcohol testing mobile units, otherwise known as the Batmobile program. There are currently 10 Batmobiles in North Carolina maintained by the Forensic Test for Alcohol branch within the Department of Health and Human Services. We're very fortunate to have this critical support program as part of our enforcement efforts in North Carolina. The Batmobile units are spe specially equipped 32 to 45 foot vehicles designed to enable law enforcement agencies to immediately process impaired drivers on site at driving while impaired checkpoints, which increases the efficiency of our officers. The Batmobile units are equipped with officer workstations, breath alcohol testing instruments, cellular phones, computers, a lavatory, DWI checking station signs, and all the necessary supplies to process an impaired driver. There's even an office on board for the magistrate so they can do their processing on board at the checking station. Having this equipment more readily available to law enforcement agencies throughout the state and equipping the vehicles to be more versatile for enforcement of all types of impaired driving offenses, not just alcohol, saves taxpayer dollars and helps increase awareness of enforcement. Today behind me, you can see one of our Batmobile units. It represents an investment of over $2.5 million by the Governor's Highway Safety Program into this valuable resource for our officers. I would like to recognize uh, Jason Smith. Jason is right over there in the blue shirt. Uh, Jason is the Batmobile coordinator for this, this unit, and we really appreciate all the work that he puts in. Uh, he, he works long hours, he works nights, weekends, and we really appreciate all that you do and your whole team does to help remove impaired drivers from our roadways and support law enforcement efforts. Thank you. Today we are in Goldsboro and close by is the home of our brave men and women in uniform of Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. And there's a lot of work still left to be done in this county. Uh, Wayne County had 10 alcohol related fatalities uh, in last year and that was a decrease from 13 in 2014. Our, this county ranks 10th in the most alcohol-related fatalities in North Carolina. Since the beginning of this year, uh, as of June 22nd, uh, Wayne County has already had 84 alcohol-related crashes, and regretfully, two of those uh, two of those crashes resulted in fatalities, and one of those folks was also unbelted at the time of the crash. During 2015, the Governor's Highway Safety Program began funding a full-time impaired driving enforcement uh, team task force in Wayne County and is now led by Sergeant Jason Hill. This unit is dedicated to removing impaired drivers from the county's roadways making sure and making sure everyone is buckled up on each and every trip. The Governor's Highway Safety Program funds similar task force efforts in Brunswick, Buncombe, Forsyth, Guilford, Mecklenburg, New Hanover, Robinson County, uh, Union, and Wake Counties. I'd like to introduce you to Wayne County Sheriff Larry Pierce, and he's going to talk a little bit about what his agency is doing on the enforcement side and the education side and this DWI task force. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for being here today as we kick off our initiative of the Booze and Lose It campaign for 2016. Last year, I was elated when I was notified that Wayne County had been approved to receive funds through the Governor's Highway Safety Program to develop a DWI task force. With guidance and funding from this program, we were able to place four task force members on the roads and highways of Wayne County. Wayne County is ranked not from the deadliest counties in the state for motor vehicle collisions and 10th in the state, as you've already heard, for alcohol-related fatalities. From 2010 to 2014, Wayne County averaged 7.8 alcohol-related fatalities per year, with 2014 being the deadliest with 12 fatalities. Since its inception in October of last year, our task force has arrested 155 drunk drivers, which averages one impaired driver for every 8.4 traffic stops. We are making a difference. Sometimes people ask, why is the Sheriff's Office working traffic enforcement? My answer is, why not? It doesn't matter the color of the uniform or the shape of the badge. We as law enforcement officers need to work together jointly to stop the crashes, to stop the underage drinking, 
and to ensure that our children and our spouses and our friends arrive alive. We are all affected by drunk drivers in some way. If that driver makes the decision to operate a motor vehicle impaired, it is all of us that have a responsibility to act. As we approach this July 4th holiday season, I pray that it will be safe for all our families and friends. I pray that our officers will be safe as they carry out this vital mission of tackling our county's DWI problem. And I hope that through this year's Booze It, Lose It campaign, our task force, along with all of our fellow enforcement officers, we will give the impaired driver of Wayne County a holiday that they will never forget. Again, thank you for being here today and thank you for allowing Wayne County to be part of this program. Thanks, Sheriff Pierce. The Governor's Highway Safety Program really appreciates your dedication and your leadership here in Wayne County. And we know that through your efforts and through this team's efforts that folks in this county are going to be much safer and protected from impaired drivers, and thank you. While there's no way to measure the exact number of lives that have been saved as a result of our enforcement efforts, we know that the efforts have helped prevent the uh, potential for tragedy and spare additional lives on our roadways. I'd like to thank all of North Carolina's law enforcement agencies and officers across the state for what they've done to help support the Governor's Highway Safety Program and all of our booze it and lose it and our click it or, click it or ticket, all of our campaigns that we run. Uh, but I would especially like to thank them for all the efforts that they put in day in and day out uh, throughout the year. During these non-campaign periods, they're out working just as hard as they would be uh, during the campaign to help identify and remove impaired drivers from our roadways, making it safer for my family and for your family and for all the other families in North Carolina to, to be able to travel safely to work, to family activities, or to our many, many destinations that we've got in North Carolina. I know that you're gonna be out in full force during this holiday period, uh, working long hours, uh, working nights, weekends, to help make sure the citizens of North Carolina remain safe from impaired drivers, and I thank you. The 4th of July is a time that we celebrate our freedoms. We decided our ho to hold our media event today in Goldsboro in close proximity to Seymour Johnson Air Force Base to honor these freedoms and those who protect them. I'm honored to have joining us today someone that is, has and continues to fight for our freedoms that we enjoy. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Staff Sergeant James Marks, 4th Security Forces Squadron, United States Air Force. Thank you, Staff Sergeant Marks, for joining us today. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Staff Sergeant James Marks from the 4th Security Forces Squadron at Air Force, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. On behalf of my Chief of Police and our leadership team, thank you to the State of North Carolina Department of Transportation for inviting security forces to share with other agencies represented here today on why it is never a good idea to drink and drive. Alcohol and drug abuse and treatment program, sorry. The Air Force clearly outlines the culture and standards by which all airmen are instructed to follow on and off duty. The responsible and legal consumption of alcohol is permitted in the Air Force. However, there is a zero tolerance policy against drunk and impaired driving. Zero tolerance meaning that an instance of drunk driving will be punished severely to ensure it won't happen again to make an example to others. The Air Force enforces zero tolerance policy by first ensuring all airmen receive proper education through the Air Force ADAP or ADAP program, which is the Alcohol and Drug Abuse and Treatment Program to prevent alcohol-related issues before a problem can develop. The primary objectives of the ADAP are to promote readiness, health, wellness through the prevention and treatment of substance mis misuse and abuse to individuals, families, and organizations. ADAP provides education at Seymour Johnson and within the local communities through the demonstrations of impaired driving and providing tools that airmen and their families can use to prevent drunk driving. Airmen Against Drunk Driving, or AADD, is another active program at Seymour Johnson that gives our airmen a second option once they're already out and have been drinking. Airmen can call a number on Friday and Saturday nights and receive a no-cost, 
no questions asked, ride home from bars or parties. This program is staffed by base volunteers and funded through the USO, the Base Top 3 Association, and the Airmen and Family Readiness Center. The Airmen Against Drunk Driving volunteers provide awareness at base instruction introductions and newcomers briefings at base and wing functions. In the Air Force, we share the responsibility of looking after our fellow airmen and making sure that we are taking care of each other and making it home safely. Our airmen are taught to be and reminded frequently that DUIs are a serious business and that if you drink alcoholic beverages and then decide to get behind a wheel of a motorized vehicle, not only do you violate, violate the North Carolina state law, but a DUI is in violation of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. And more importantly, you endanger your life and the lives of others. We teach our airmen that if you choose to drink, have a plan. For every case of drunk driving that happens within our communities, the one common thread is that individual who decided to get behind the wheel did not have a plan. A failure to plan is a plan doomed to fail from the very beginning. With this in mind, we encourage all airmen to have a plan before going out. Have a designated driver, money set aside for a taxi ride, or the number to AADD. If the initial plan falls through, we encourage airmen to contact the, their direct senior ranking supervisor or to assist in arranging a ride home for them. Next is to remain at a safe location until someone from their unit leadership can assist in a safe transportation solution back to their place of residence. Lastly, walking home is better than driving home, but should be avoided if the member is seriously impaired to limit the chance of bodily harm. For Air Force military members, regardless if a DUI or DWI on or off base, the military member will be subject to disciplinary action under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. For both enlisted and officers, a DUI could result in a combination of criminal conviction, demotion, forfeitures of pay, render members ineligible for promotions, or non-recommendation for enlistment. Clearly, the Air Force takes issue this issue very seriously. Security forces at Seymour Johnson upholds and mandated Air Force instructions and uniform code of military justice through policing the installation of both military and civilian activities. The primary focus of the 4th Security Forces Squadron is to serve and protect the base community. Individuals who choose to drink and drive pose a serious threat to both its members and property and therefore will be dealt with accordingly to the severity of the incident with the fullest extent of the law. With alcohol-related incidents that occur on base, military personnel will be processed by the Uniform Code of Military Justice and civilian personnel will be turned over to Goldsboro Police Department and held, handled appropriately. The cost of a DUI, to put plainly, is a severe and long-lasting in every aspect. Any single instant of a drunk driving will, without a doubt, place anyone's military career in serious danger and could very well impact the rest of your life. It's just not worth it. Thank you for allowing us, allowing us to stand alongside other agencies represented here today and speak about this important issue. Thank you for serving the great, the people of the great state of North Carolina and taking purposeful action to prevent more tragedies within our community. Thank you. Thank you, Staff Sergeant Marks. We really appreciate the work that you do for all uh, the United States citizens and your service to our country. Uh, thank you for what Seymour Johnson and the, the Air Force is doing to offer solutions to impaired drivers for, for the airmen. Thank you. The Governor's Highway Safety Program and the North Carolina Department of Transportation will be utilizing social media to help get the message out about this heightened awareness period. The You're Smarter Than That campaign reminds people to plan ahead if they choose to drink. Call a cab, phone a friend, ride a bus if that's available, use an app on your phone. All these will help save your life and those around you this holiday. The You're Smarter Than That campaign is now complemented with a mobile website, besmarterthanthat.com, that users can use to get home safely. I'd like to thank Sergeant Josh Steins of the Goldsboro Police Department, our Wayne County Law Enforcement Coordinator, 
coordinator and our law enforcement liaison for this region, Sergeant Smokey Pierce with the Aiden Police Department. I'd also like to thank David Williams for all he's doing as the alcohol coordinator for the Governor's Highway Safety Program. But most importantly, I would like to once again thank all of our law enforcement partners that are here today and those that couldn't join us that throughout throughout the state and all they do day in day out to help us in this battle against impaired driving. Thanks to the Forensic Test for Alcohol branch with the Department of Health and Human Services, our district attorneys across the state that support our enforcement efforts, the conference of district attorneys, all they do with training uh, to help the officers and the, the DAs, uh, MAD, uh, we appreciate their partnership, and all the other partners out there that help us in this ongoing battle against impaired driving. As you celebrate with your friends or family the birth of our nation, I urge everyone who gets behind the wheel to make smart decisions that can often make the difference between life and death. Drive safe, drive sober, and make sure that you're buckled up and everyone in your vehicle's buckled up regardless of their seated position. And I remind all motorists out on our roadways that if they see law enforcement, our fire and rescue personnel, our DOT crews, our tow truck drivers, or other emergency vehicles out on the roadway, if they see them at the side of the road with their emergency lights in operation to make sure that they slow down and move over. We want to make sure that we protect those that are out there to protect us. I hope all of you have a safe and enjoyable 4th of July. Thank you for attending today's event. Back on Wayne Goldsboro Television, coming up on uh, the first annual Memorial Judge Tim Finan Prayer Breakfast. You know, I miss that guy a lot. Oh, everybody does. Yeah, Judge uh, Tim Finan. Tim Finan passed away last year, unexpectedly, of course, because he was just uh, everybody, even he appeared to be in the tip top condition, and it was a shock when he did pass away. Yeah. And we do miss him. Judge Finan will be remembered with a, uh, a memorial coming up on June 30th. That's Thursday. Thursday of this week, yes. yeah. Uh, begins at 7.30 at St. Paul United Methodist Church in the Fellowship Hall there. And everyone's invited to attend and donations will be accepted for the St. Paul Scholarship Fund. That's at the corner of Chestnut Street and John Street. Mm -hmm. John and Chestnut at St. Paul Church there. All right, today is the 28th. Today is National Colonists Day. Ah. That's a, a columnist is a person who, who builds columns and puts them on big buildings and houses and stuff. Really? No. No, not really. A columnist is a person who, what does a columnist do? Stop it, they write columns. Oh yeah, they write columns. You write columns, and then providing you, you know, you put M-N at the end of it, then that's, that makes it official. Okay, we've got National Columnist Day, that's today. Also, International Body Piercing Day. Oh. Yeah. And if you're a, a columnist with body piercings, then boy, it's your day twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big day for you. That's right, big day. Okay, National Handshake Day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm, okay. Good one. Good deal. And let's see, what else do we have? Leap second. Oh boy, that's next. That's that's not today. That's Leap. Yeah, leap second. Okay. That's the thirtieth. That's okay. the last day of the month. Okay. That's not today now. Okay? Not today. Don't not get today. ahead of yourself. Not today. Today is not leap second day, but leap second day. Is everybody knows what a leap year is. Right. Well, everything is accurate right down to the minute, but every few years we have to have a leap second to readjust our clocks. All right, so think about what you want to do for your leap second. <laughs> think about it and spend it wisely now because you don't want to waste that time. That's right. All that's right. right. So anyway, that's on the 30th, which is uh, this Thursday. Coming up this Thursday. Uh, coming up Thursday. Okay, that's here's right. today's trivia question. Okay. The category is Thomas Edison. Everybody knows who Thomas Edison was. He was a, a prolific inventor in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, what was Thomas, no, 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 what, no, no. What company founded by Thomas Edison, and everybody knows this company, remains one of the largest publicly traded companies in the world? Good question. He founded this company, he started it, and it's still there, it's one of the biggest. What is the name of that company? Thomas Edison created it. We're going to go to our next interview, and we'll be back on Wayne Goldsboro Television. Stay right there.
All right, so this is our this is our mobile breath alcohol testing unit. So these are these are the breath alcohol testing units. Um, usually, you'll find these everywhere in the state. There's over 2,000 of these in the state. They're usually at your sheriff's department, your um, highway patrol offices, um, any law enforcement center can have these. Uh, anywhere in the state, though, you'll usually only find two. They have two to three of these units in their in their actual testing facility. We're a little bit better where we got six on this on this vehicle. So. What we're trying to do is we're trying to, as they said out there, is help facilitate law enforcement to expedite the, the DWI process. Uh, from DWI stop to processing the paperwork to see the magistrate can take anywhere from two hours. When we get them in here, it's about 45 minutes. It's a one-stop shop. They bring them in. They test it. After they've been arrested, they, they've already done all their tests on the side of the road. They bring them in here. They do their test. When they get done with their test, we have a magistrate or a judge on back. They'll go back there and see them. They'll lose their license right here. In this vehicle so as soon as they leave here they won't have a license so uh, what we do we're not just the enforcement side we're also education we do a lot of the education as they said we teach law enforcement how to do their field sobriety test how to do their detection and apprehension of DWIs and uh, impaired drivers so really any type we are the when you think forensics we are the science scientific portion of how uh, drugs and alcohol affect the human body so any, any type of questions, we are the gurus that they go to. Um, we have seven of these vehicles, not this size. There's three this size throughout the state at any given time. Uh, there's four smaller ones. You can't take this, um, if you're familiar with anywhere, some of those mountain roads, you can't get this on some of those mountain roads, but because we are state uh, representatives, we can go anywhere in the state. So not only will you see us in Topsail, you might see us in the mountains. Uh, you know, Mount Airy or, or something like that. So we go everywhere. We're in Cherokee, uh, all the way on the, the west side, all the way on the east side. If, if you can think of it, we're there. So we try to we try to get out there and we try to do as much as we can with law enforcement agencies. Um, again, uh, seven of seven vehicles. We're, we're trying to push eight or nine more, um, but that's what time they're coming. Uh, this is a, a grant funded vehicle, uh, meaning that it's federally funded. The money is not coming from taxpayer. This is not taxpayer money that paid for this vehicle. Um, it's not state taxpayer. Money. Correct. <laughs> correct. This is this is federal yes. federally budgeted money. That's correct. Um, but this vehicle this vehicle alone with everything in it costs about a little over half a million dollars. Has anybody got any questions? Or I, I can ramble on about this stuff all day long, but I'm sure there's more specific stuff you guys would like to know. Anybody? What they're looking at back there? That's the DRE room. Those are our drug recognition experts. Again, we train uh, these guys so that not only do they detect, um, are they proficient in detecting how alcohol impairs the human body, but how drugs and other impairing uh, substances affect the human body. Uh, with alcohol, there is a there's a, a baseline. We know a .08, you're, you are in too impaired to operate a motor vehicle. With drugs and any other type of impairing substance, we don't have a baseline number. So you either are positive or you're negative, and that's what we train uh, drug recognition recognition experts to identify those type of people and based on their testimony to a magistrate or a judge a driver can lose their license as well they don't have to have the point zero eight as long as they can testify that yes they were too impaired to be operating the vehicle anything any questions this was built out of uh, Matthew specialty in Greensboro um, we, that's where we've got every every vehicle that we've had constructed has come out of Matthews okay. and out of Greensboro, so they're all locally made in, in North Carolina. It's pretty cool too. There's a camera. Don't the camera. This this one doesn't have a camera. Yeah, this one doesn't have a camera. Uh, there's no camera on this one. Where do you, and where do they live? I mean, do they all live in the same place, or do they live in regions? Or? Well, as a, I am a back coordinator, so I'm responsible for driving this vehicle as well as coordinating with law enforcement where they're setting up their checkpoints and okay. getting out there with them to help aid them. Again, we are just we are uh, assistants. We are not there to do anything with the enforcement side. We are there to help them with anything they need. If they have questions about running tests, if they have right. questions with the instrument, if they have problems, that's what we're there for. So, as a coordinator, we are actually region based. Yeah. So, for for example, I'm actually region based out of Pitt County. Okay. And if you're familiar with Pitt County, it's yeah. everything the northeastern part of the state. Okay. The person that was supposed to be here today, she was she had a family emergency, so I, I got roped into this. Okay. But I, I enjoy talking about it, so I don't mind. So there's one garage, then 
Pitt County, Southeast. Well, there, out there's of not garages. We, we okay. typically will park them either at a law enforcement center okay. or at a depart uh, DOT. Well, garage at, at a DOT somewhere that has 24. We have to have 24 hour sure. access because at any time we could be. Um, you know, like today, typically we wouldn't be doing anything, but on a Monday, you know, we had a lot of kickoff campaigns today. So we have to have 24 hour access wherever we park it. But it's also got to be semi secured to where it's not going to be vandalized and everything else. So we try to pick uh, DOT garages or um, law enforcement centers. Like mine will be probably parked in the Greenville PD in their area at their police department. And then uh, there's one in, in uh, all the ones on the western side. I'm not exactly sure where they're parking theirs. But they're they're typically in law enforcement centers. Okay. Yeah. Just interested in the right. community. So but now this one's actually out of Raleigh. This one's actually based off of Six Forks Road. So I came from Six Forks Road today. Okay. And it will go back when I get done. Uh huh. So that, but this one is typically the center center uh, part of, of North Carolina, so Wake, uh, Chatham, Pond, oh. all your all your central regions, this yeah, one will sure. typically be seen there. Okay. But it will also end up out in my area. I have a smaller bat, I have a thirty foot. It's an older map. It's only 30 foot. This one's 45 foot. So as you can guess, there, I only have three units in mind, whereas this one's got six. So uh, there, there have been checkpoints where I've been on where we've had all these instruments being used. Okay. So it, it, it does happen. And during that time, there was 24 people on here, including law enforcement and then people running tests and people waiting to see the magistrate. So it, there, there could be a lot of people on here. How do you make decisions? Do local um, law enforcement, do they ask you to come to their area? Absolutely. And, you know, we've got this big event right, right. today Absolutely. or that's two weeks from now. Will you come and be here for that? And that, we will try to. And again, it, it all depends on, that's why we do, it, we're, our position is called a coordinator. We go and we try to make fit our schedule with their schedule. So, hey, these are my open dates. What are you doing? And then right. I'll try to work in. And if I'm open, I'll take it. I'll, I'll go ahead and jump out there and do it for my area. Um, if somebody has, they can't fill in their area and they need help, and I'm not doing anything, I'll go out there and help them. So there could be multiple vehicles in one area, but typically we try to coordinate in our own area. So, um, but we coordinate again with law enforcement. They'll tell us, hey, we've got checkpoints, we've got Fourth uh, of July event, can you come up here and set up for an education? And we do education events all the time. We set up at high schools and we talk to um, youth, we talk to driver's eds, uh, driver's ed students, and, and explain to them the effects of alcohol and how drugs affect the human body. So we try to nip it in the bud if we can. But that's another part of our, our education side of it. We're just not enforcement, we're also education. So we're at, we'll also be at the fair. We'll be out there at the fair set up booths and have information available. So we do a little bit of everything. Okay. All right. This program serves as an example national to actually. A lot of states really want to replicate what North Carolina is doing. Uh, being at a lot of hands of the border checkpoints where we do checkpoints on the border with different states. Sure. Um, it's pretty interesting to see that the technology where North Carolina is in is state-of-the-art compared to other states. I was in Tennessee last week, and they literally had a trailer that served as their unit, but it, it was nothing compared to what we, we have. Uh -huh. This is more efficient. It saves a lot of taxpayer dollars. Any, any other questions, comments, concerns? We're back on Wayne Goldsboro Television. You know, the Goldsboro Wayne County area was honored very recently by being appointed one of America's defense communities. Right. And there's only a handful, and I mean literally a handful of those across the, the nation. There's ten. only 10 only in the ten. whole country. In the whole country. And That's we're right. one of them. That's right. right. That's right. There's only nine others. There's only nine others, and we're mm -hmm. one of those. One of those 10 in the country. So we should be extremely proud. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. We, um, there were about eight community members that went to D.C. last week for the uh, the, for the celebration, so to speak, there will be a community celebration coming up very soon, and we will be sure to keep you all in tune to the details and the times and all that so that our community can come together and celebrate. That's but good. this beautiful magazine, um, it uh, says America's Defense Communities, gr creating great places for our military to call home. And I don't know if you can see this very clearly or not, but the image on the front of this national magazine mm -hmm. is Leaning a photo forward. Of, there you go. of an airman from Seymour Johnson Air Force Base and a young man who was an airman for the day 
through um, a program that's called Pilot for a Day that Goldsboro Pediatrics and Seymour Johnson Air Force Base collaborated on. Um, so folks, everybody across the country is seeing this image. It's a great magazine that talks about the communities and, and the highlights and um, it's just, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. But you know what? What? I am not surprised. You know, I'm not really surprised either. This mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. you all are doing incredible things to help support the men and women who serve and their families. Yes. Um, and, I, you know, Colonel Slocum has coined the phrase, make it better. Mm -hmm. How can we make it better? So anything that we've done well as a community, there's ways to improve upon it. Um, and so just, you know, be mindful. Look out for our family members who are our neighbors, who are going to church with us, who are working with us. Um, and their families because uh, it takes a whole family to serve and they are sacrificing uh, an incredible amount um, to, to defend our country. That's a, that is so true and we should be so proud that Seymour Johnson is right wow. here in Wayne County and we are proud of that. We are. We love Seymour Johnson and we love their families there and these are people as you mentioned these are families that shop here they go to church here yeah. and their kids are in school here they're part of our community and we, we we're so happy that they're here we've adopted them yeah, they, and they've adopted us. They have. I mean, they really have. So it's a, it's a beautiful relationship and one that's been around for a long time, and we hope forever more. Um, and so anything that that we can do, I challenge each of you watching um, to see if there's something more we can do to support. I wonder how many people are not aware of the fact that every time, and I almost, and I would have to carefully say, almost every single event that involves a community effort, uh, if somebody needs help. If it's a soup kitchen, if it's the, if it's uh, United Way, United or Way. Chain, I mean, it's exactly yeah. if if it's a Meals on Wheels, they they people from Seymour Johnson Air Force Base are involved in every single uh, community and and charitable event going on here in Wayne mm -hmm. County. Every single one of them, mm -hmm. absolutely everything. So we certainly need to thank these people for everything they do for us, not only for their service to our nation, but for being a part of our community and helping us out here in Wayne County. That's right, and we do appreciate them That's very right. much. Okay, here's the answer to today's okay. trivia question. Thomas Edison, what company founded by Edison remains one of the largest publicly traded companies in the world today? Did you know that Thomas Edison created the company that eventually became General Electric? How about that? Yeah. He did. It's wild. That's a big one. It's a big one. It's really it's a big, big one. one. And he would, he did. A smart man. Yes, he was smart. In fact, every time he invented something, it was a race to get to the, to the patent office because nine times out of ten, somebody <laughs> else across town was also working on it. And that's a fact. That's right. It, it was, uh, those, were time, those were creative times when he and all these other inventors in, in the country were creating all these new, these new things, all these innovations. But uh, he, uh, he holds the, the record for the largest number of patents and from the patent office, it's well over a thousand. I think it's close no, I didn't to over, realize that. Yeah, over fourteen hundred patents in his name. Wow. Yeah, things that he created. A little bit of everything. Okay. Remarkable. That's it for today. We're okay. going to be back in here tomorrow. Join us again tomorrow, seven a.m. The show repeats at noon. Then the show will repeat at five thirty p.m. We hope you have a great day. And recall, remember that if you happen to be driving across the county or across the country, please wear your seatbelt. Wearing seat belts saves lives. That has been a that has been proven. It is a fact, and you're just not doing anything but taking your life into your own hands if you're not wearing your seat belt. That's right. Regardless of how careful a driver you are, because many times, many times people who are in traffic accidents, it's not their fault. And if they're not wearing a seat belt, then you're just putting your own life at risk. That's right. Wear your seat belt, okay? You'll be happy you did, and your family will as well. So until tomorrow, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kate Daniels. And this is Wayne Goldsboro Television. Mm -hmm.